Hello, Internet. Internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. It's Friday, and that means it's time to fire up another free-to-play game. It's Monday, uh, actually, as I'm recording this. Uh, funny story. Let's talk first about the video that's on your screen right now, okay? This is Bullet Run. You guys might have noticed that it popped up on Steam as a free-to-play a few days ago. It's kind of hot garbage. It's uh, kind of crap. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it later on, but just go ahead and kind of get a feel for it as you feast your eyes about uh, looking at the footage that's on your screen. Uh, I want to kind of try to explain myself, though this is the internet, this is YouTube, I don't really feel that I need to explain myself, uh, but I do like to. I like to let you guys know exactly what's going on in my world, and uh, when I don't produce a video that's scheduled, I like to let you know why. Well, the main reason that you didn't get a free-to-play Friday this Friday was because I was going to delay it to free-to-play Saturday so that I could get some solid footage of the End of Nations beta. For those of you who don't know about End of Nations, it is an MMORTS forthcoming from Tryon Worlds and uh, made, uh, developed by Petroglyph. Petroglyph, those guys know what they're doing when it comes to making an RTS, so uh, they are definitely the sort of guys you would want to have on board with an ambitious project like this one. So what happened then? Well, I uh, played the beta as I had played it a week before and uh, enjoyed it, got some footage recorded, only to realize it's NDA'd. So uh, there is a non-disclosure agreement in place, which apparently I signed as part of the uh, agreements that you have to go through in order to get into the game that I feverishly clicked accept through. Uh, but knowing that this does sometimes happen and having not really seen a lot of End of Nations content on the internet, uh, I went through and I did make a check and found that the uh, the very copious amounts of footage that I had hoped to cut together into a montage of sorts uh, would not be usable. So, End of Nations still under NDA, and uh, pretty much once I realized that, I was kind of disheartened. I installed Bullet Run, hope, hoping, fingers crossed, that it would fill the gap, uh, but like I said, hot garbage, and uh, ended up not really wanting to make a video about it. So I'm still not really making a video about it, it's just on your screen right now. <laughs> Uh, but it's it's just a weird game. Uh, it, it is it's an odd sort of game. It's the sort of game where I play it and I ask myself, who looked at the market of free to play games and said this is what we need? We need another free to play FPS that is, for all intents and purposes, a sort of a run and gun kind of. It, it has a bit of a modern warfare feel to it. Uh, you know, you slowly upgrade your guns, all this business. Uh, who looked at the market and said, this is what they need more of? We need a few more of these. And now I'm sure this game's been in development for a few years or whatever. It's Or it's some Korean import that Sony picked up. Uh, it is from Sony Online Entertainment, uh, by the way. But uh, I was just majorly disappointed by it. I think the main selling point and the thing that they attempt to do with the game to set it apart is uh, kind of... Uh, they kind of steal a little bit from the uh, movie Gamer. Uh, you are essentially a, a guy who is uh, in a television show, and you're trying to get more uh, popular, you're trying to get your character more popular, but you're essentially just a clone. You know, it's not, uh, it's not you dying every time you die, and that's sort of their attempt to explain respawn, which most of the time games don't try to explain respawn, they just say, hey, it's a game mechanic, you respawn. Uh, but in this case, you are a clone every time you respawn, and uh, you're trying to get the favor of the viewing audience. Uh, and they, they get that theme, dri uh, they drive it home, they get it, uh, they, they get it out there by putting cameras around the, uh, around the actual levels. I mean, it's pretty well done in that sense that they're working with their theme. Uh, but just the gameplay doesn't support it. Oh, another thing that they do to try to support the theme is uh, having announcers. Uh, the announcers are awful. Uh, of course, it's really difficult to do announcing in a game like this. The only game, uh, action game, to really get announcing right recently uh, has been Super Monday Night Combat, which again, uh, oddly enough, this game kind of borrows a lot of their shtick as well. Super Monday Night Combat, you are participating in a futuristic sport, you are a clone, uh, you are trying to do great things for, you know, like taunts and things, for higher ratings and things, uh, to get more money, and there is a quirky announce team. Uh, of course, over there, they pull it off really, really well, because the announcers tend to talk about things that are going on in an objective-driven game, 
whereas these two announcers struggle to talk about things that are going on in a PvP uh, free-for-all. And it really doesn't work out really well. You get a lot of the same lines over and over again. Uh, they have a sort of a British guy and some other guy, and, and both of them are fairly weakly voiced. Uh, but, but all in all, I mean, it's a nice touch. You can see that somebody really tried with this game. And, and I don't necessarily mean because the graphics are amazing or the gameplay is amazing, but somebody sat down and they, they plotted out a nice design document for this game. It's the execution where I think everything sort of started to go off the rails and fall apart. Uh, the game itself is just... It's just odd. It's just janky. It's just the way that it moves and it functions and it works. It just doesn't convince me. Uh, so many things are, are there that you would f be familiar with, that you would recognize, but they don't work quite the way you would expect. It's, it's just a really, really strange game, and I, I'm not even sure why it exists. Uh, every now and then I install a game in, in the free-to-play market, and I just sit there and scratch my head and I try to figure out why this game exists. What market segment are you actually trying to g get or steal or tap into with this theme? And, and I don't know that they really know. I mean, there's deep customization visually on your character. So you kind of have a Saints Row style uh, where your clothes actually get you uh, more cred or whatever the hell they call it. Uh, so the, the style points, the cooler you look and the more of their clothing that you buy from their store, from their cash shop, uh, or their, you know, you can use in-game currency, but the more clothing you buy, the more that sort of stuff, you know, the, the cooler you look and I guess therefore the more viewers you pull in, I'm not really sure. Uh, but the whole clothing thing actually ends up interfering in some of the mechanics as well because you end up with characters that that largely look the same and in military shooters in uh, in most modern shooters you have that problem of, of sameness you know as much as I think it's kind of somewhat racist to constantly be shooting brown people uh, in these games it's a whole lot easier for me as a gamer uh, to shoot someone who is uh, the counter-strike guy you know like there is such a distinct difference between the, the characters of Counter-Strike. When you look at them, the terrorists versus the counter-terrorists, you know at a glance. Uh, and a lot of these other games, especially the modern military games, where both sides are just sort of in military uniforms that are slightly different shades of brown, you just don't get that. And I really like games that have that immediate visual rec uh, recognition. Boom, I know that guy's not on my team. He's dead. There are several times where I unloaded half a clip into a guy because I assumed he was on the other team, but I wasn't quite scrolled up enough, like my view wasn't quite adjusted vertically enough to see his nameplate over his head. So, you know, I came in a really close quarters with a guy, unloaded a clip into him, he didn't die, he didn't shoot back at me, and then I sort of looked up a little bit and saw his nameplate. Stupid, embarrassing, you know, and then 30 seconds later I'm dead. Uh, it's just the sort of thing that I think you can avoid in modern games. I mean, yeah, okay, you want to make guys, you want to let guys look really cool. Well, you know, a game that really did that well for all of its faults was Brink. Brink allowed each side to customize their characters, but the visual palette that they were choosing from was so unique that you rarely, if ever, confused, uh, 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 uh what, what the hell were they called? What are the sides called? The, the revolution guys versus the security or whatever it was. You rarely ever confused those guys. You could, you could pick out at a second, a split second, who was who, and uh, you knew when to shoot and when to hold off. And this game lacks that severely, but uh, I don't really want to get into any more of the specifics on this game other than to say it is free to play. You are free to try it out. I'm going to give it more time, maybe play two or three more games, just try to get a feel for it and see if I can discover any sort of hidden awesomeness that is buried under all of that refuse uh, that I've so far been wading through. So guys, the last thing I'm going to hit on here is the Indie Gala. The Second Chance Gala Bundle. Indie Gala 7 is out, and you know that that means that Indie Gala 6 is currently up for grabs. On last week's Free to Play Friday, there was a contest to uh, mention the word Gala, and you would win an Indie Gala. Well, only about three people actually mentioned Gala, so if you were one of the three, you will be getting your notification uh, in your YouTube inbox in the next uh, day or so for your code, for your uh, URL 
to get to your uh, your delicious game from Indie Gala number six. Now, Indie Gala seven is going on right now, and one thing I do want to announce is uh, after only two instances of the Second Chance Gala giveaway, I think I'm done with it. Uh, this particular Indie Gala looks really weak on paper, and uh, I'm just really not that enthusiastic about it. So as opposed to uh, continuing with the Gala giveaway where I grab four bundles and give them away uh, at the release of the, of the next bundle, so I would grab four copies of seven and then give those away when eight is uh, debuted, I'm just going to stop it all together. Uh, I may start a contest with uh, Indie Royale, as I really like the Indie Royale right now. I love their game selection. The games that they're choosing to include have been really great and really innovative, and uh, I just don't think that for the Indie Gala. I think this current uh, Gala is worth it for King's Bounty alone, uh, but apart from that, uh, the rest of the games are just kind of sketchy. I'm going to delve into them. I'm going to try them all. I'm just not excited by the Indie Gala anymore. They continue to put out bundles uh, far too frequently, in my opinion, and uh, they've really burned up all their goodwill with me. So uh, you will not see any more Indie Gala giveaways here on this channel. All right, guys, I think that is going to do it. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, bullet run footage you're seeing on your screen. This was from like the first or second game that I played, so that might explain some of my suckiness. Uh, but otherwise, give give Bullet Run a chance. Uh, if you are really interested in finding yet another free-to-play FPS, this one with a heavy emphasis on character visual customization. Uh, other, otherwise, just stay away from this game. If you already have a go-to free-to-play FPS, just stay away from Bullet Run. Just don't even waste the gigs of downloading it. Uh, you probably will not enjoy it uh, whatsoever. All right, guys, thanks for sticking it out for me here in the video. Uh, content might be a little weird this week. I may do something up on the website. Uh, video production is probably going to be a little limited, my ability to do video production. Uh, I am starting to feel uh, quite the tickle in my throat as I finish this video, all 12 minutes of it. I am sort of starting to lose my voice, uh, so that is something I'm going to have to definitely take care of. Uh, I do use my voice in my everyday job, so I don't want to come up voiceless and uh, have to take any more of my precious vacation time or even some of my uh, sweet, sweet sick days that I've spent years storing up. So uh, video production probably going to be on hold again this week. I might try to throw something out. Highly doubtful. Look for an article on the website, BigDavisCheap.com, and then look for content on the weekend. I know we've got some new subscribers, and I don't want to make a bad impression on you guys, but at the same time, if I can't talk, I can't make videos, and I'm actually so parched right now that I'm going to end this so I can get some water in my throat. All right. Thanks again, guys, and until next time, take it easy. If you just joined us, we've got even more explosive action coming up. <laughs>